Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Deku was hit with age regression quirk, All Might takes care of him, part 1. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic Chibi Fighter, link is in the description, also subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's begin the video. Uraka. Look out. Before the heroine in training had time to think, she was roughly pushed out of the way by Izuku. Izuku let a cry of agony rip out, as the beam the villain had intended for her hit him instead. Deku? She cried out in horror. Izuku felt as though his body was on fire with growing intensity. He had a high pain tolerance, but at one point the pain became too much, and he passed out. Uraka called out her friend's nickname while running over to where he used to stand, now deduced to be seemingly just a pile of clothes. Don't worry. For I am here now. Called out a voice from up above. Both hero and villain looked up to see the number one hero hovering above them before landing on the ground in front of his student. All Might. Uraka exclaimed, a sense of hope filling her voice. Damn. Not you. The villain cursed. Before anyone had time to blink, All Might sped forward and grabbed the villain by the front of his costume. Texas smash. He yelled out before punching the villain, effectively knocking him out. After calling the police, informing them of his capture, All Might turned his attention to Uraka, who was kneeling in front of a familiar-looking pile of clothes. Young Uraka, what happened? Uraka looked up at him, and that's when the number one hero noticed the tears in her eyes, threatening to spill over. Deku, Ieda, and I were planning on going to see a movie together. While well, we were waiting for Ieda to get here a villain attacked. We tried to evacuate civilians when he shot out a beam of light meant for me. Deku took the hit for me, and now he's now he's. Uraka was cut off when she and All Might heard a strange noise. Did Izuku's pile of clothes just whimper? Uraka with shaking hands, lifted the All Might t-shirt that lay on top, revealing a small infant with green hair and matching green eyes that held both fear and confusion. Deku kun Uraka exclaimed. As if on cue the baby let out a loud wail, letting his tears finally fall. So that's everything that happened. The recovery girl asked as she examined the baby in front of her. Uraka nodded from where she sat next to her teacher, All Might, who was currently holding the now sleeping infant in his arms. It seems he may have gotten hit with an age regression quirk. Age regression? So is he going to have to grow back up? Uraka asked. Not necessarily. These types of quirk usually only last the number of days the one hit is. Midoriya is 14 so in two weeks he should be back to normal. Uraka let out a sigh of relief. So what should we do in the meantime? All Might asked. I would say bring him home. Have his mother look after him in the allotted two weeks. She must be worried sick, the recovery girl responded. Actually, Uraka responded nervously. All attention was on her, Deku-kun said that his mother would be gone for a couple days, and his father she trailed off not wanting to finish that sentence. Luckily she didn't have to. The two adults in the room got the message. There was a moment of silence before it was broken by the number one hero. Well then it looks like I'll have to look after him. Uraka looked at her teacher with a shocked expression, All Might, are you sure? Izuku, who had just woken up, clearly looked up at All Might, making cooing noises and raising a chubby little hand up. All Might brought his free hand towards the baby, causing him to grab at one of his fingers and squeeze. Don't worry young Uraka. It's the least I can do, he is my student after all, and someone's gotta do it. Uraka nodded. At least she could sleep easy knowing her friend was in good hands while he recovered. Before leaving, recovery girl gave All Might some essentials she had found lying around her room. A shirt to put on Izuku, although it was still rather big on him, diapers, baby wipes, and baby powder. Anything else he would need he would be on his own. When All Might got back home he carefully placed the baby on the couch before transforming. Izuku, who had been staring at him the whole time, started to cry at seeing the big person leave him with this skinny stranger. Ashinori sat on the couch and picked up Izuku, bringing him close to his chest and slowly began to rock him. It's okay Izuku my boy. Everything will be okay because I am here. After a couple of minutes Izuku stopped crying, now reduced to a couple of sniffles. There. That's better, Tashinori cooed before lightly poking Izuku's stomach, causing the baby to giggle. Suddenly Izuku stopped giggling and looked up at Tashinori with sad eyes. Tashinori froze fearing the worst. Did Izuku just know, if I remember correctly that means he's just hungry. Alright, let's see what I can give you in the kitchen, Tashinori said, as he walked into his kitchen, Izuku nestled in the crook of one of his arms, feeling slightly relieved that the problem wasn't what he thought it was. If I remember correctly, the recovery girl said judging by your appearance and growth you're about 6 months old so you can eat solids, they just have to be soft. Tashinori pulled out a can of mashed potatoes, intending on feeding Izuku it when he remembered one crucial detail. He didn't have a can opener well it looks like it was off to the store. 
Ashinori felt a little awkward. Shuffling around a grocery store with a baby clad in nothing but a diaper and an oversized t-shirt felt a little weird to him. What was even weirder was all the attention he got while walking with little Izuku, despite being in his true, less than attractive form. A sudden wetness snapped him out of his thoughts. He looked down to see Izuku had grabbed onto one of his fingers and was now biting it. Well I have to admit. He is really cute Tashinori thought with a smile as he pulled his finger away, ignoring the slight sting. After walking over to the baby aisle, deciding to buy the boy a pacifier, the blonde headed over to check out. He placed his goods on the conveyor belt and shifted Izuku to his other arm so he could grab his wallet from his pocket. Here's your bag sir, and might I just say your son is so cute, the cashier said. Ashinori nodded as he mumbled a thank you and tried to hide the blush that started to appear on his face for being mistaken as his student's father. When he got home he sat Midoriya down on the kitchen table. Grabbing a spoon he opened the jar of baby food he had and scooped some out holding it in front of the baby. Instead of opening his mouth Izuku just used his hand to bat the spoon away, causing it to clatter on the ground. Izuku, Tashinori sighed, picking up the spoon and putting it in the sink as his student giggled. Grabbing another spoon he tried a different approach. Getting another scoopful he smiled in a goofy fashion and said, here comes the aeroplane. That seemed to do the trick as Midori opened his mouth, allowing Tashinori to get the food inside, only for him to spit it back out in the blonde's face. Tashinori used a nearby napkin to wipe off his face and sighed. How am I going to do this? Maybe I'm in over my head on this one he thought, placing a hand over his face. Izuku stared at the man in front of him. He looked sad. He didn't mean to make this nice person sad. Izuku sniffled as he got ready to start crying again. The man Izuku was looking at looked over towards him and gently wiped one of his falling tears away. It's okay little Izuku, I know you didn't mean to upset me. Ashinori decided to try one more time. He got another scoop of food and thankfully this time the baby ate the scoop and the next one and the next one. This pattern continued until there was no more food left. Throwing the empty jar away and gently lifting the infant up the hero lightly tapped the baby's back, earned him a satisfying burp. The man smiled. This wasn't so bad. He could do this. That's when he smelt it. Oh right. He forgot about that part. Midori my boy, would you just hold still? Tashinori grumbled as he attempted to change the squirming, naked baby. Izuku let out a small whine as he continued to squirm. The bareness of having his diaper removed made him feel uncomfortable. Tashinori frowned. Getting the diaper off and wiping him had been disgusting, but easy. It was getting another diaper that was the hard part. When he finally managed to get the darn thing on Tashinori was exhausted. Getting the pacifier he bought he wrapped Izuku in the softest blanket he could find and stuck the pacifier in his mouth and laid down on his bed, placing the infant next to him. The hero watched with a fond smile as the pacifier lulled the infant to sleep. This wasn't so bad. Only 13 more days to go. Feeling the pull and sleep tug as his eyelids and well the blonde whispered a good night to the infant beside him before flicking off the light switch. Hopefully tomorrow will be easier. Ashinori woke up from a dreamless sleep. Despite waking up he felt as though his mind was in a haze. Something didn't feel right. The hero rolled over, attempting to go back to sleep. He was just tired. So he closed his eyes hoping to fall back asleep. That's when he remembered the events that happened the other day. Midoriya. Tashinori exclaimed looking around. He wasn't next to him. He was only a baby, his student couldn't defend himself right now. Where could he have gone off to? He got out of bed. He had to find Izuku quickly before something bad happened. That's when Tashinori heard the sound of something hitting the floor coming from the kitchen. He ran to the kitchen, bracing himself for what he might see. When he got there he saw Izuku crawling around the floor, a dish rag and a large pan next to him. Tashinori scooped the baby up and checked him for injuries. He didn't seem injured so when that pot fell it must have missed him. Tashinori let out a sigh of relief and took a closer look at his charge. His green messy curls were now closer to the style he had at age 14 instead of the patches he had the night before. He was still a baby but looked bigger and weighed a little bit more, although he was still small and light for his age. Today he was one year old. I'm glad you're alright young Midoriya. You gave me quite the scare, Tashinori said with a fond smile. Izuku just stared at Tashinori with a blank stare before copying his smile and kicking his legs and giving a little squeal of delight. While his mouth was open, Tashinori took notice of the row of baby teeth starting to poke out of his gums. Looks like you can eat some actual food, Tashinori said, as he got out a box of Cheerios. Placing Izuku on the counter in front of him, Tashinori grabbed a paper plate and poured some of the dry cereal on it. Without having to be told Izuku picked up a tiny fistful over the Cheerios and stuffed them into his mouth, making another happy sound. 
Ashinori chuckled, you're so smart, I didn't even have to tell you what to do. As if to contradict him Izuku picked up one of the Cheerios and threw it at Shinra's face, giggling, as it bounced off and fell to the floor. Despite just having something thrown at him however the hero took it in stride, remembering the events of the night before. Some things never change. After a small breakfast, Izuku's consisting of Cheerios and Tashinaris coffee since he didn't eat much to begin with Tashinori placed the baby on top of a towel on his bed as he attempted to change him. Midori my boy please hold still, Tashinori said in a tired voice. Trying to change him last night when he was merely months old was hard enough when he was a squirming infant. Now Tashinori had to deal with an infant that could apparently crawl and walk on his own. No. Izuku exclaimed as he kicked his feet. Tashinori was taken aback. He blinked, Izuku my boy. Did you just talk? No. No 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 no, Izuku said with a smile. Tashinori smiled as a feeling of pride swelled deep inside of him. He wasn't sure why. After all, he knew Izuku was only talking because his mother had most likely taught him by the time he was one, however something about his pupil talking made him feel that way. Tashinori gently placed a hand on Izuku's head. You really know how to brighten up my day don't you? Izuku squealed in response. When he finally got the diaper on, Tashinori decided it would be best to get Izuku some clothes so he wouldn't have to wear the same oversized shirt while he grew back into his 14-year-old self. Not to mention the shirt kind of smelled due to how old it was and Izuku needed a bath, he was dirty from the events of yesterday, so putting the shirt back on him after the bath would defeat the purpose of even making him take one in the first place. So after swaddling a fussy Izuku in a soft blanket, Tashinori left the house. When he got to the shopping plaza it fortunately didn't take him long to find a children's clothing store. He went in and immediately felt awkward since all the people in there were young expecting mothers or mothers with young children. To someone just walking by he probably looked like some creepy homeless guy who just wandered in. The hero was snapped out of his daze when Izuku reached up and gave one of Tashinori's signature hanging strands of hair a sharp tug. Ouch. Izuku. He hissed trying not to sound too harsh while he gently grabbed the infant's hand in an attempt to make him let go of his hair. How'd he even get his hand free from the blanket anyways? The mothers in the store who had previously been watching him wearily either let out small giggles or smiled good-naturedly before acting the way they had before he walked in. With the hostile atmosphere now gone Tashinori walked over to the baby aisle and started his search for clothes. Do you like this one Izuku? Tashinori asked, holding up a plain red t-shirt. Izuku stared at Tashinori blankly. I guess not. How about this one? Tashinori asked, now holding up a light blue shirt with a teddy bear on it. Izuku stared at Tashinori before letting out a yawn and closing his eyes. The man sighed. Who knew shopping for babies would be so hard? Excuse me sir, can I help you with anything? Asked a woman who wore an employee's vest. Tashinori turned to face the woman, yes. Do you know where I can find clothes for him? I'm no good at clothes shopping, he asked, gesturing towards the dozing bundle in his arms. Of course. How old is he? About a year. The employee nodded and looked at the clothes before them before picking out a light green and white striped shirt denim overalls. Will these do? Ashinori smiled, yes, thank you, he said, taking the clothes. Do you need help finding anything else for your son? The Shinra stifles the urge to cough up blood. She thought Izuku was his son. Why did people keep thinking that? And no, you got it all wrong. Izuku's not my... Ada. Ashinori whipped his head downwards. Izuku now had his eyes open and was sending the man holding him a cute smile. Ada. The employee who had been helping let out an awe. As she watched this scene unfold before her. Tashinori on the other hand tried to hide his face, a blush appearing on it. So sir, do you need anything else? Wait, if you said your son was a year old he'll be walking soon, so you'll probably need some shoes for him. I'll be right back. The woman walked away leaving Tashinori in his blushing state and Izuku smiling up at his daughter while he sucked on his own hand. Ashinori ended up leaving the store with a pair of overalls and shirt the woman picked out, a plain red shirt and a blue shirt with the words All Might written in dark blue on the front, he thought Izuku would look cute in it, along with two pairs of denim jeans to go with them, a pair of black sneaker that thankfully had straps instead of shoelaces. And blue foodie pajamas Izuku could use for the night and hopefully the next night as well, he bought it in a larger size so Izuku would grow into it as well as some other things such as two pairs of boxers and socks. While he was out he also decided to get some baby shampoo and a teddy bear Izuku kept staring at, of which happily grabbing at it when presented to him, started drooling on its arm. When the pair got home Tashinori released the baby from his blanket restraints and placed him, who had just discovered he had feet and was staring at them in fascination, on his bed while he folded the clothes and placed them in a clothing basket. 
When he was done he picked Izuku up and carried him to the bathroom. He placed Izuku on the floor and turned his back so he could start the bath. When he was sure the bath wasn't too deep and was the right temperature he turned around so he could take Izuku's diaper off. When Tashinori turned, however, he was not met with a baby Izuku, but instead just his diaper. Izuku. Tashinori called out exiting the bathroom to look for the naughty one-year-old. He couldn't take his eyes off that kid for one minute could he? He walked into the living room and found Izuku sitting on the floor chewing on one of the teddy bear's ears. The number one hero walked over to him and brought him back to the bathroom. Tashinori attempted to take the bear away from Izuku, however the stubborn infant refused to give it up. Izuku please, Tashinori pleaded. No, no 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 no. Izuku responded by keeping his iron grip on the bear, his face scrunched up in anger. But it'll get ruined if you put it in the water. No, no no. Eventually Tashinori gave up and allowed Izuku to go into the tub with the bear. Fortunately for him it didn't take long for Izuku's attention to be drawn to something else, namely the bubbles in the bath, causing him to discard the bear. Tashinori fished out the soaked stuffed toy and placed it on the bathroom sink. He'd have to throw it into the dryer later on. Tashinori turned his attention back to Izuku who was holding some of the bubbles, staring at them in fascination. Then, before he could stop him Izuku shoved the handful of bubbles he had into his mouth, only to spit them back out with a sour look on his face. Well at least I know you won't be trying that again, the adult said, as grabbed a large cup he had nearby, filled it with water, and dumped it on Izuku's head. Izuku let out a whine of displeasure, but nothing more. After repeating this process Tashinori then grabbed the baby shampoo. He got a generous amount of this hand and got to work washing his charged hair, whose attention went back to the bubbles that floated around him. After that was done he got to washing his limbs which wasn't as hard as he thought it would be. When he was done being washed the blonde unplugged the tub and picked Izuku up using the towel he had grabbed, wrapping it around him in the process. He walked back to his room and placed Izuku on the floor as he started to dry him. Where's Izuku? Tashinori said as he placed the towel on the infant's head and proceeded to dry his hair. When he was done he took the towel off, revealing the baby he had lost there he was. Izuku giggled and shook his head like a wet dog to get all the excess water off. It wasn't long before Tashinori finished drying the baby off. When he was done he threw the towel off to the side and decided he would just dress Izuku in his new PJs. It wasn't like the pair were going anywhere anyways. With minor difficulty, because Izuku just loved pestering the number one hero, he was able to get Izuku into the PJs and zip them up. Fu. Fu. Tashinori was quiet for a minute as he tried to decipher what his pupil was saying before it dawned on him. Food. Oh you must be hungry. As if on cue, Izuku's stomach growled. He let out a small whimper before he started to cry. Tashinori sighed and picked the baby up. There is a young one. Everything is alright. Izuku looked up at the adult holding him, a small frown still marrying his features and tears still pricking his eyes. Tashinori carried him to the kitchen and placed him on the counter so he was sitting. Tashinori looked through his cabinet, trying to decide what he should feed Izuku. It was around dinner time so it had to be something that would hopefully keep him full until the next day. He eventually decided to cook himself and Izuku some scrambled eggs. Sure, it was a western dish, but he wasn't sure what else to give the baby. When the two were done eating Tashinori decided he would just watch the news while Izuku played his still damp teddy bear on the floor in front of him. Due to the predicament his student was in, Tashinori had to put all might business on hold until Izuku became older, so at the moment he wasn't in the loop when it came to things like villain attacks. When the news was finished he looked over towards Izuku just to check on him. Izuku had fallen asleep and was using his bear as a pillow. For what seemed like the 100th time today, Tashinori smiled due to the cuteness. Picking the baby up he brought him to his room and laid him down on his bed. He then left as he wasn't that tired himself and still had some things to do, such as laundry. Once the door to the bedroom closed behind Tashinori, he swore he could hear Izuku mumbled one word in his sleep. Dada. Daddy. Wake. Tashinori flinched away from the little fingers that pried his right eye open and efficiently woke him up. He propped himself up on his elbows so he could look at the now two-year-old sitting on his chest. Well that would explain the sudden weight he thought to himself. I am now, Tashinori responded tiredly. Izuku let out a small giggle, and he climbed off of his guardian's chest and off the bed, practically bouncing, as he made his way down the hall. Tashinori didn't know how the kid could have so much energy. You'd think aging one year per night would take a lot out of someone. Not Izuku apparently. Bedding up off of his bed, Tashinori followed the now little two-year-old's path into the living room, where he was sitting on the couch holding his bear. You're sure to be full of energy today. What would you like for breakfast? Tashinori asked with a small smile on his lips and a hand on his head. Pancakes. The little one cheered. 
All right, all right, Tashinori replied, tousling the little boy's hair, earning him a giggle. Tashinori walked into the kitchen, Izuku not too far behind, and started to gather the ingredients he needed to make the pancakes. Let's see, if I remember correctly to make pancakes I need eggs, milk, sugar, flour, baking powder, butter, and salt. Daddy. Daddy. Let me get eggs. Me. Izuku chirped excitedly. All right, all right, Tashinori responded once again. One had to admire the kid's enthusiasm. Izuku padded over to the fridge and opened it with little difficulty. He looked around before he spotted the eggs on the second shelf. Unfortunately however, even on his tippy toes Izuku just couldn't reach the eggs. Izuku do you need some help? Tashinori asked. He had a bad feeling about how this was going to play out. I got it. I got it. Izuku started jumping up and down in an attempt to reach the long sought after eggs. Izuku if you would just. I got it, Izuku replied, his fingers grazing the carton. Just a little higher. Mustering up all the strength he, as a toddler could have, Izuku made one big jump for an egg, grabbing onto the carton. I got it. He exclaimed happily only for his grip, the slip, and the carton to fall onto the floor, breaking all the eggs inside. The two stared at the mess on the floor for a moment, as if to sink it into what had just happened. Tashinori wasn't mad, although he was a little upset about the mess, however that feeling was instantly discarded when a sob escaped Izuku's mouth, as he bent down, trying his best to clean up the mess he made, and put the eggs back together again. Tashinori felt his heart break a little, and knelt down next to Izuku. Izuku. The child didn't face the adult, and continued to keep trying to put the eggs back together. Tashinori gently grabbed the child's chin, and turned it towards himself. Izuku's face had tears streaming down it, a look of both guilt and maybe a little bit of fear, gracing his once happy features. Izuku, it's okay. Izuku didn't respond, just sniffled. I'm not mad. Tashinori pulled the toddler into a hug. Izuku clutched his shirt and buried his face into it, the fabric muffling his sobs. After about a minute the two separated. All better now? Tashinori asked, as he placed one hand on Midoriya's shoulder, and used the other hand to wipe a single tear that was making its way down the child's face. Midoriya nodded, and Yagi smiled fondly, then go in my room, and waited for me. I'll clean this up, we'll get dressed, and then go out to eat, okay? Izuku sniffled, and smiled, okay daddy. Izuku left for the Tashinori room to change. Meanwhile the number one hero grabbed some paper towels to clean up the eggs, when realization dawned on him. Izuku had been calling him daddy and he hadn't even noticed it. Tashinori spit up some blood. Well, now he had two messes to clean up. When he was done cleaning up the eggs Tashinori headed into his room and helped his charge change into the overalls and shirt the lady helped them pick out the day before. Next, Tashinori had the toddler wait for him in the living room so he could change. With Izuku having the mind of a two-year-old Yagi would hate to see how he'd react to the permanent scar he had. After getting his clothes on Tashinori, Izuku headed out hand in hand. It wasn't a long walk to the restaurant Tashinori planned on bringing Izuku to thankfully. Only about a 10 minute walk. It was an American themed diner that he had been wanting to try for a while. They'd also definitely have pancakes since they were a popular breakfast food in the western world. After they were seated by a waiter and gave their drink orders to the Tashinori ordering coffee for himself and Izuku wanting apple juice, he left to get them, giving Tashinori and Izuku some time to chat. He had to admit he had kind of missed being able to talk to Izuku. Before today Izuku couldn't really talk that much, and now that Yagi could talk to his student, granted a much younger version of him, it was kind of nice. Keeping the questions simple and light-hearted, he asked Izuku what his favorite color was. Izuku paused his scribbling on the kid's menu activity paper he had been given, as his eyes drifted up towards Tashinori's hair. Hello. He responded adamantly. A smile made its way on Tashinori's lips. He reached his hand over the table at Izuku's head. It amazed him how the kid could be so darn cute with every word he uttered. Here you go sir, said the waiter, as he placed the coffee mug in front of the adult, and here you go little sir, he said, placing the child cup of juice in front of the little one. The waiter took out his pad and paper and asked, so what can I get you two today? Pancakes. Izuku yelled out, fisting the air. What kind would you like? The waiter asked. Izuku paused. He looked towards the waiter, then at Tashinori before he started fumbling with his fingers a small blush forming on his face. Tashinori instantly recognized the look on his charge's face. That was the face he made when he was embarrassed. Some things really do never change. Taking action, Tashinori said, I'm sorry, he's a little shy. He'll have the silver dollar pancakes, and I'll have a short stack. Alrighty, the waiter responded, as he jotted the orders down and took Tashinori's menu before leaving. Once he was gone the two continued to talk, Tashinori remembering to ask simple questions like, do you know how to spell your name? 
and what do you want to be when you grow up? To Tashinori's surprise, Izuku was pretty well spoken for someone only two years old. Granted he wasn't the best when it came to speaking, but he was better than most toddlers. Here are your orders, the waiter said when he came back to the table, placing each person's respective order in front of them, along with a bottle of syrup. Izuku gave his pancakes a confused look. Midori my boy, is something wrong? Tashinori asked. Izuku responded by making a distressed sound and looking at Tashinori then at the pancakes. This is what confused him. He couldn't figure out what the taik was trying to tell him. Izuku, I can't figure out what's wrong unless you tell me, Tashinori said in a calm voice, hoping to calm down the emotionally hyper child. I can't eat, Izuku squeaked out. He looked at the pancakes before realizing what he meant. Sliding the plate over to himself, Tashinori cut up the pancake into tiny pieces before sliding it back over to Izuku. Izuku looked at the pancakes blankly before a grin split his face. The rest of their breakfast was fairly uneventful. The two finished, Izuku got syrup on his face and fingers, which Tashinori had to wash off with much difficulty, and the two left making their way to a more populated part of the city. Because of the incident earlier, Tashinori had to buy more eggs. He was also originally going to buy more diapers as well, but had learned not long ago that by this age Izuku was, thankfully, potty trained. The pair were walking by a store with TVs in the display window when Tashinori felt Izuku tug his hand. Daddy? Look. Izuku ran up to the window, Tashinori let the toddler drag him over as well and pressed his face up against it. Tashinori smiled at what was on the TV screen. It was him, as All Might fighting a villain like it was nothing. He's so cool. Izuku beamed barely able to control his excitement. Tashinori chuckled. Oh if only he knew. When they made it to the supermarket Tashinori picked out a cartridge with a little plastic car attached to it and placed his charge inside of it. I need some help making my way around the store. It's your job to help me. Izuku nodded determinedly, as though it were his swore duty to help his guardian find his way around the store. Gripping the fake plastic steering wheel he steered the cart in different directions. When the cart stopped he grinned triumphantly when his daddy patted him on the head and told him good job. The toddler leaned back in the plastic car, happy to take a break. Looking around the place he was in he realized just how cool it looked. It was packed with really tall shelves and food and stuff. It looked nothing like his house or the place he and his daddy ate food earlier. One aisle in particular caught the toddler's attention. It was filled with shirts, pants, and other clothes with different colors plastered on them. Even better was that some of them had all might on them. Izuku glanced at the adult accompanying him to tell him where he was going. However he seemed really engrossed in whatever he was looking at. Figuring he wouldn't be gone for long Izuku climbed out of the car and headed over towards the aisle. Following the clothing lined with All Might's name and face Izuku was led to the toy aisle, specifically the hero toy aisle. He gawked at the aisle lined with action figures and other toys associated with heroes. He only knew the one, that being All Might, but despite that he thought that all the heroes looked cool. That's when Izuku saw it. An All Might action figure. Letting out a squeal of delight, Izuku made a grab for it. Daddy look. He exclaimed excitedly. He turned around so he could go back to where he came only to find he didn't know where he was. Izuku looked around, as a sudden sense of fear started to grip him. Daddy? Ashinori placed the medium-sized eggs in the cart. He had wanted to get the large eggs, but the store was holding a sale on medium-sized ones, thus the internal battle he had been going through a couple minutes ago. He didn't really need to worry about money, he was a hero after all, but since he was currently raising a rapidly growing child, he figured every cent counts. He bent down towards the toy car his charge was in to tell him to drive them to the checkout line. However after doing so he realized the Izuku wasn't in the car. Tashinori felt his heart stop, as it was gripped by something he hadn't felt in a long time. Fear. Frantically, he searched around the nearby aisles, behind displays, however he couldn't find the child. Izuku. He called out several times. He never got a response. He asked several people if they had seen a little boy with messy green hair anywhere. They hadn't seen any kids like that around. It was at this point dark thoughts started to creep in. With speed that could rival All Might's, Tashinori made his way to the customer service area. He had to find Izuku before something terrible happened. What if he had been kidnapped? What if he was hurt? What if what if? Sir. Tashinori snapped out of his thoughts and looked up at the woman at the customer service. She was giving him a concerned look. She opened her mouth to say something, but was cut off by her walkie talkie. Hey, Aika-san, are you there? One second, the woman said before taking the walkie and looking away. Yumi-san, I'm busy with a customer, can it wait? I guess, but I found this kid, and I don't know what to do with him. He said his name was Izuku. Ashinori perked up. Aika sighed, well, bring him here. 
I'm sure his parents are worried sick, so she put the walkie-talkie away and turned back to Toshinori. Sorry about that sir. What can I help you with? Toshinori chuckled out of relief, never mind. That conversation helped me more than you could imagine. Not long after, a woman, about in her early 20s, came into the customer service area, awkwardly carrying a squirming toddler. Ika-san, I don't know what to do with him, Fumi said, as she tried to keep her grip on the kid. Said kid then spotted a familiar face. Daddy. He exclaimed, breaking free of the women's grip and running over to Toshinori who had knelt on the group and opened up his arms the moment he saw his son. Izuku my boy, I'm so glad you're safe, he said hugging the small child was okay. He was okay and safe in his arms. After a couple seconds he pulled away but kept his hands on Izuku's shoulders. Don't you ever run off like that again young Midoriya, he scolded with a firm look and tone. I'm sorry daddy, Izuku whimpered. He really didn't mean to make his daddy mad. It's okay my boy, just don't do it again, he said, bringing the boy back in for another hug. Later that night, after eating dinner and watching some TV with the toddler and playing some games the two laid in bed. Izuku curled up next to Toshinori like a cat and burrowed into his side fast asleep. Toshinori laid on his back, his arm curled around Izuku protectively, absently playing with the boy's hair as his mind raced with thoughts. Of those thoughts the most prominent one was in the form of a question. When did Izuku become his son? The boy let out a small noise in his sleep. Toshinori glanced at him to see if he would awaken. Instead he rolled onto his side, snuggling closer to his guardian's body. Toshinori closed his eyes as his thoughts came back to him. When did this quirkless boy whom he had met by chance and taken on as his successor transcend the boundary of student and teacher and become like a son to him? It couldn't have started when Izuku got turned into a baby. No, it had been there longer. How long had Izuku seen him as a father figure for that matter? He had a feeling it hadn't started when his age was regressed, it had to have been earlier, but it certainly couldn't have been when they first met, right? Now that he thought about it, where was Izuku's father? Did Izuku ever even meet the man? Was he dead? He glanced again at Izuku's freckled face. He looked so peaceful while he slept. He closed his eyes once again, a smile gracing his features. As a hero Toshinori never had time for a wife, never mind a family or a son, but if one thing was certain it was that from now on he consciously knew Izuku wasn't just his successor or his student. He was his son. It didn't matter when or how it happened, or whether it was shown consciously or unconsciously up until this point. Izuku was the closest thing Toshinori would ever have to a son. And he was okay with that. His alarm woke him up before Izuku had a chance to. At first he was confused as to why his alarm was going off on a weekend. Then Toshinori remembered that it was Monday. He had work today. Uh oh. Shutting off his alarm, Toshinori sat up in bed and glanced at Izuku. Like the morning before he was slightly bigger and taller. He was about three years old at the moment. I don't think it would be wise to bring him to UA just yet, however there is no way I can leave him alone, and it's unlikely I'll be able to find a babysitter on such short notice. Toshinori let out a sigh as he made a decision. He would have to call out of work today. Principal Nezu he was assuming had already been informed of what had happened Friday, so All Might was sure he'd understand. Bedding out of bed Toshinori stretched, wincing a little when he heard what sounded like his back cracking. Turning around he pulled the covers up on Izuku, who had kicked the covers off himself during the course of the night. I'm going to have to get him new clothing Toshinori thought, noting how tight the foodie pajamas were starting to look. Despite that they didn't seem to affect the one wearing them, who had rolled over in his sleep and snuggled into the warmth that was the blankets. After a quick phone call Nezu granted Toshinori permission to stay at home and look after Izuku. Toshinori thanked him, promising he'd be back by tomorrow. Hanging up, Toshinori heard a knock on his door. It was 5.12 am so he was honestly a little skeptical as to who would visit at this hour, however it turned out to just be the mailman. Good morning, I have a package for Yagi Toshinori, the mailman said, holding a fairly good-sized package. That would be me, but are you sure there isn't a mistake? He asked. Toshinori never ordered anything online, nor did he even really get that much mail. Despite what his alter ego might have you believe he really wasn't the most popular guy. Pretty sure this is the right address. Have a good day sir, the mailman stated, handing Toshinori the box before leaving. Toshinori fumbled a little with the box. It was a bit heavier than he expected. Closing the door with his foot, Toshinori walked over to the table and placed the box on it. He grabbed a knife and sliced the box open. The first thing he noticed upon opening the box was that it was full of clothes. The second thing he noticed was that there was a note on top of them. It read. Dear All Might. I was able to get into Deku's house using a spare key, I once saw him slip in under his doormat and grabbed any clothes I could find that looked like they could fit him when he was younger. I also grabbed some of his current clothes for when he comes closer to his regular age. 
I wasn't sure about your address, so Azawa Sensei had to send this for me so don't worry, you still have your privacy. Good luck. Iraka Achako. A smile tugged at Tashinori's lips as he set the note aside and took a closer look at the box's contents. On top were neatly folded baby clothes however it seemed the farther he went the larger the clothes were to accommodate for the target age. I'll have to make sure to thank her later on Tashinori thought. Suddenly he jolted forward slightly. Something had just latched itself onto his leg. And he had a feel of what, or should he say, who it was. Looking down did indeed confirm his suspicions that it was in fact Izuku who had attacked him. Good morning, my boy, he said, placing a hand on the toddler's head. Izuku just smiled back up at him cheekily. During breakfast while Izuku ate cereal, Tashinori had started to go through the box of clothes. There was nothing stellar about the clothes however one in particular caught his attention. It was honestly designed to look like his hero alter ego's costume, a hood part included to resemble his hair. Pulling it out, Tashinori heard Izuku let out a gasp, his spoon falling with a clatter and being forgotten on the floor. All might. It all might. He yelled out excitedly, bouncing in his seat. He knew he should probably make the three-year-old finish his food first, but his heart beat out his mind as he handed Izuku the Onisi and told him he could try it on. Izuku immediately snatched the Onisi and ran as fast as his legs could carry him to the bedroom, trying not to trip. Tashinori watched from his seat in amusement, wondering how long it would take until Izuku inevitably couldn't figure out how to get the darn thing on and asked for his help. Daddy. Apparently not that long. After getting the Onisi on, Tashinori lifted the toddler up and brought him to the bathroom so he could see his reflection. I look like All Might. Izuku squealed, kicking his feet, making it hard for Tashinori to keep his grip on him. He placed the child on the ground, who upon being released spun around to face the adult, and someday I'm gonna be a hero like he is. If only he knew Tashinori thought. If only he knew, as a toddler that 11 years later he would actually inherit his idol's power. The kid who probably died from excitement before he even reached that age. Daddy, play with me? Izuku asked. I think you mean, do you want to play with me? Tashinori corrected. Okay. Daddy, wanna play with me? Better Tashinori thought, what do you want to play? Tashinori asked despite the fact that he had an idea of what the toddler had in mind, if the costume was any indication. Hero and villains, Izuku said, putting emphasis on the villain's part by raising his arms up. Tashinori chuckled at the scene, alright my boy. How do we play? Izuku beamed, as though Christmas came early. He jumped up and down excitedly before grabbing Tashinori's hand leading him to the living room, babbling all the way. The bad guy is being mean, and you be like oh no, and then I'll be all might and be like I'll stop him, and then mean the villain will fight Kasi bad and. Hey, hey. Tashinori exclaimed. Izuku stopped walking and looked up at his guardian. Izuku explained it again, but this time slower, he instructed. He could barely understand a word the kid had said, however he thinks he heard the words, fight, and all might somewhere in there. Izuku let go of Tashinori's hand and ran a couple steps in front of him before turning to face him. The bad guy is mean to people, Izuku started, crossing his arms with a pout, all might will get there and say, everything is fine. Why? Because I am here Izuku said while placing both hands on his hips and beaming proudly, then he's gonna beat up the bad guys and save the day. He finished by punching the air in front of him before raising his fist in the air and imitating All Might's signature laugh. While Izuku was busy getting caught up in his act, Tashinori swiftly took out a handkerchief and spat blood into it. For a moment Tashinori thought about telling young Midoriya that he was All Might. The toddler was a huge fan after all, and seeing how he thought Tashinori was his father, he'd be ecstatic to learn that All Might was Tashinori. However, he refrained from doing so. He loved Izuku a lot and trusted the boy immensely, but children, more so young children, tend to let things slip out. Although he knew Izuku would never do so on purpose there was a possibility he could let All Might's identity slip by accident. Above all else however, he didn't want to risk Izuku's safety. With great knowledge comes great risk, and he didn't want to put such a burden on his pupil while he was in such a vulnerable state. So for now, Tashinori would just have to swallow his longing and pretend that he and All Might were separate entities. Daddy? Snapped out of his thoughts by a toddler's voice and a small hand tugging on his pants to get his attention. He looked down towards Izuku who was staring at him excitedly. Are you? The toddler asked. Tashinori paused, am I what? Ready to play. Izuku chirped. A playful smirk captured Tashinori's lips as he backed up and said, oh no. All Might is here. Izuku caught on and let out a hammy laugh, that's right. Everything is okay. Why? Because I am here. He pointed a finger at Tashinori, I will beat you for Izuku's finger fell from its point as he tried to think of a bad thing that this bad man could have done. 
Luckily, Toshinori noticed and improvised for him. Please forgive me All Might for robbing that bank. Izuku came out of his thoughts and looked at Toshinori, huh? Oh. I mean um Izuku placed both hands on his hips, no. A bad man like you needs to get beat up, and uh. Please don't send me to jail. Oh, and send you to jail, Izuku finished triumphantly. It took all of Toshinori's willpower not to laugh at how cute his son looked in his little power pose. In that case Toshinori said, reaching for a pillow on the couch behind him, grabbing it. His smirk grew, take this. He exclaimed, throwing the pillow at Izuku. The toddler let out a surprised oof. As he landed on his bottom. Getting up he smiled wolfishly at the villain and threw the pillow back at him. The pillow hit his leg, but Toshinori pretended that it made such an impact that it caused him to fall over. I got you Mimi. Izuku exclaimed, running up to Toshinori thinking he had won. However, he had just walked right into the villain's trap as the blonde grabbed the little hero and started tickling him. Foolish hero. You won't win that easily. Toshinori said, adding an over-the-top evil laugh at the end as the hero fell down onto the floor. Say you surrender, Toshinori said to the giggling child. He stopped in his tickle torture to give the child some time and to breathe. Never. Izuku said between breaths. Toshinori smirked once more, then faced the consequences, he said, making his hands look like claws. Izuku picked up the pillow that had been abandoned on the floor and threw it at Toshinori, hitting the now kneeling adult in the chest. Toshinori pretended to be hurt and fell over on his back letting out an exaggerated grunt of pain. I've been defeated. Izuku toddled up to him and climbed on top of his guardian's chest, smiling brightly. Yes you bad man. I have won because I am all might. He declared raising his fists in the air while sitting on top of the villain's chest. As Izuku laughed All Might's signature laugh, the real All Might that laid beneath him let out a quiet chuckle. Oh, if only he knew. Later that night, I found Toshinori in the kitchen cooking dinner while Izuku watched TV in the other room. Toshinori wasn't a chef by any means, however he did have fairly good cooking skills. Ironic considering what happened to his stomach. He was in the middle of cooking hamburgers, he had a soft spot for American food when the green-haired ball of energy himself came barreling into the kitchen, his teddy bear in tow. Daddy. Daddy. Toshinori put the burner of the stove on simmer before turning his attention to the toddler that was jumping up and down near his feet. What is it my boy? The computer. The computer. Toshinori asked. The computer. Izuku repeated excitedly. What about it? Toshinori asked, trying to ignore the fear that Izuku had broken it or used it in some arts and crafts nightmare topped off with glitter. Daddy. The video. Show me. Video. He asked, his confusion building. Instead of answering him the little three-year-old just started chanting his favorite hero's name over and over again. All Might. All Might. All Might. Toshinori sighed. All right. All right, he grabbed Izuku's little hand and the two walked to the room where the computer was located. He still had no idea what Izuku was babbling about, but he hoped that if he looked up his hero name online, that maybe he could find out what Izuku was talking about. Picking him up, Toshinori placed the excited toddler on the computer chair, himself opting to stand while typing in his name on his computer's search engine. It was kind of weird searching himself up since he tended not to do it. He knew of all the gossip and rumors that came with being as famous as he was, and I'd honestly rather avoid all that. There. Izuku exclaimed, ceasing his excited head banging. Toshinori followed his son's gaze and was taken aback slightly. This is my debut video he thought, as his hand slid the cursor towards the video, as though it had a mind of its own. Clicking on it caused Izuku's attention to be solely directed towards that video. The more it played out the more excited he became. By the time the video ended Izuku was practically shaking with excitement. Yay. All Might. All Might. All Might. The little boy chanted. Ashinori blushed slightly at the sight. He knew Izuku was a fan, but wait, what was that smell? Toshinori took another whiff and felt his blood freeze, shit. He whispered before dashing away. His burgers were burning. As he laid in bed, the toddler snuggled up close to him, and weakly clutching the oversized shirt Toshinori had worn to bed, he went over something that had been bugging him ever since it had happened earlier that day. That video. Izuku wouldn't remember that video if all his memories had been locked away. He shouldn't even technically know who All Might was. He was still a little apprehensive about it to be completely honest, but he had to get Izuku to the recovery girl, and that meant going into work. Izuku would be 4 by tomorrow, and he could only imagine what kind of trouble the little one would get into. Not to mention the problem of keeping up his double life, as All Might a secret. How would All Might teach the class and keep the knowledge of his true identity a secret from the toddler if the said toddler was attached to Toshinori's hip? Lying awake in bed wouldn't do him any good. Toshinori decided he would sleep on it. 
Hopefully by tomorrow he will figure it out and get some answers. Ashinori learned very quickly that at age 4 Izuku was practically obsessed with superheroes and quirks. So when he was brought up he would be bringing Izuku to work with him and explained that his workplace was a school for soon-to-be heroes, to say Izuku was ecstatic would be an understatement. What are the quirks they have? Izuku asked excitedly. They refer to the students at UA. Well there's a girl who can make things float, a boy who can run fast, another who can control ice and fire. Wow, Izuku whispered. His green eyes sparkled like emeralds. After eating a quick breakfast Toshinori tried his best to persuade Izuku to take off the All Might Honesty. My boy, don't you want to wear something different when you visit the USA? Izuku shook his head. Putting the thing on Izuku was easy. Getting it off would be a challenge. After a couple more persuasion attempts Toshinori finally caved in and decided he would bring Izuku to UA with him dressed like that. Heading to the school took longer than Toshinori would have liked. Usually he would just transform into All Might and leap from roof to roof. It was the fastest way to get to UA and allowed him to do his morning patrol, killing two birds with one stone. Considering his current situation though, Toshinori was forced to take the bus. It wasn't that he minded being around people it's just the stares he got for his appearance ranged from concern to horrified. He could vividly remember one incident where he had taken the bus and a young child toddled up to him before being dragged away by their mother and being told not to talk to strange looking men. Nonetheless he tried not to let it get to him. If anyone knew the extent of how unattractive his true form was it was him. When the two boarded the bus there thankfully weren't many people on it for a Tuesday morning. It was rather nice out so it's possible that most opted to just walk to work or school. Too bad the walking distance from his house to UA was too far away. Izuku was practically bouncing in his seat as he watched the city pass him by. He was so excited he'd be able to go to the hero school. Imagine all the cool quirks he would see. What if he got his quirk today? Would he run into any maybe he would run into his all-time favorite hero All Might. To him the bus ride seemed to take forever. For Toshinori it ended too quickly. To everyone else, it was only 25 minutes. Clambering off the bus the two walked a good five minutes hand in hand from the bus stop to the front of the UA campus. Punching in the UA Pasco Toshinori walked in with Izuku. Upon entering the doors Toshinori felt relieved to see no students in the halls. Good. I need to explain things to less people too. The two walked in silence to the recovery girl's office. Little Izuku was in awe. He was inside of UA. The same school a bunch of heroes were at. Not to mention how cool everything looked to him. Upon reaching her office, Toshinori called out her hero name. Izuku looked up at Toshinori, mumbling the name before his eyes lit up with recognition. He knew her. That was. Ah, Toshinori. Back so soon. And I see you brought little Izuku with you. How are you doing lad? Recovery girl asked, as she suddenly appeared from one of the back rooms of her office. Izuku mumbled something unrecognizable before hiding behind his daddy's legs and burying his face in the back of them. He's a little shy, Toshinori explained, trying to detach the boy who had a vice grip from his legs. Well at least we know he's strong, recovery girl responded watching the two struggle with faint amusement. He seems to be fine physically so that can't be the reason you brought him to my office. Toshinori gave one final heave, getting the toddler off of his leg and holding at the hip so the two are facing each other. Izuku, there's some paper over there and I'm sure recovery girl has some crayons in her desk drawer. Why don't you draw us a pretty picture while the adults talk? Okay, Izuku responded as his guardian put him down allowing him to run off. Once he was out of earshot Toshinori fixed recovery girl with a serious expression. Izuku remembers who All Might is. Explain. Well last night he was talking about all these heroes and he wanted me to pull my debut video online. You said his memories were locked away since he got hit by that quirk. Yes but, as he's growing up gradually he could as well be regaining his memories back gradually. Imagine how traumatizing it would be to remember 14 plus years worth of memories all at once, recovery girl explained. But what if he remembers something traumatizing like the USJ incident, Toshinori glanced at Izuku who had found the crayons and was scribbling away on a piece of paper. What if he remembers his mother? How am I going to explain that? Recovery girl had a look of ponder on her face before looking back at Izuku. It seems his old memories are coming back via triggers. That costume he's wearing or something you two saw may have triggered his hero memories. As for the video, it could be something that was a large part of his childhood, this is why he remembered it. Recovery girl turned back towards Toshinori before she continued. As for memories that were formed after the age of 14, I don't know if they can come back to him while he's like this. Toshinori nodded. This was a lot to take in. Yet there was still more the healing hero had to say, as shown when she leaned in close. Toshinori leaned in as well so he could hear her better. In a low voice she whispered, if I were you I wouldn't mention anything to do with mothers. 
This will just create confusion for the boy and may have some dire consequences. Ashinori nodded before leaning back and placing a hand on his head. This was going to be harder than he thought. Addy look. Both recovery girl and Tashinori looked at Izuku, who was holding up a picture of what they assumed to be Izuku and Tashinori holding hands and smiling being surrounded by a bunch of others. That's very nice Izuku, Tashinori responded to the boy who simply smiled before he resumed coloring the picture. Tashinori's eyes snapped to his old friend who was giving him a smug look. What? Daddy ha? Huh? She said before chuckling. Tashinori blushed and spat up some blood. He quickly shook off his stupor however. I've been meaning to ask you about that. For some reason Izuku has been calling me that. Do you have any idea why? What do I look like to you? A children's psychologist, Chio said with her usual bite, I don't know, but I get the feeling it could be a mix of two things. The first being that he just assumed you were his father since you were the one taking care of him. The second is that before this happened he could have either consciously or subconsciously seen you as a father figure, and now that he's in this state it could all be coming into fruition. Ashinori blinked in surprise. Did Izuku really see him as his father? He had thought about it a couple nights ago, but hearing someone else say it out loud strengthened his suspicions. It would make sense. Like mentioned before he had never seen Izuku's father, and the boy never mentioned him, only his mother. Then someone who he had looked up to for years took him under his wing. It was only natural that Izuku would see him as a father. He himself saw his mentor Nana as a second mother. The connection he had with Izuku compared to his other students was different as well. It felt more personal, and it wasn't just because he knew Izuku longer than the others. It's because Izuku became what Tashinori never knew he needed. He became like family to him. Izuku practically became his son, and he became Izuku's father. Your interaction with each other even before the change would make an outsider think the same thing, Chio suddenly said, pulling Tashinori out of his thoughts, I know he's your successor, but anyone else would think otherwise. The boy's got you wrapped around his finger. Tashinori let out a dry laugh. What can I say? He is my son after all. Daddy, I finished my picture. Izuku said, as he ran up to the two adults holding the picture up. That's a very nice Izuku, Tashinori said. It's for you, Izuku said, holding the picture towards Tashinori. Thank you very much my boy. I know the perfect place for it, Tashinori said with a smile. Even as a child Izuku was thoughtful. I made one for you too, Izuku said in a more shy manner, as he held out a picture to the recovering girl. The recovery girl smiled at it. It was a picture of her. It wasn't the best picture, but it was the thought that counted not to mention he probably worked very hard on it. Thank you Izuku, stay right here, I got a surprise for you, the recovery girl said before walking into the back room. She came out a couple seconds later with a red lollipop. Here you go, she said, handing it to Izuku. Thank you very much, Izuku thanked with a bow, as he accepted the candy. He immediately took the wrapper off and gave it a lick. He let out a gasp and looked at the recovery girl. This is Recovery Girl, how did you know my favorite flavor was cherry? Recovery Girl let out a chuckle, magic, she replied. She actually knew his favorite flavor lollipop because of how often he was in there, but she couldn't tell him that. The child stared at her in wonderment. Wow. After a short goodbye the pair left this time for Tashinori's office. He planned on calling Izawa and asking him if he could watch Izuku. He was anything but a babysitter, but Izuku would enjoy being able to sit in during a hero class. His classmates would also probably be relieved to see that he was alright. By now they had surely heard the news and must be worried sick. Walking into his office he pulled up his debut video on his laptop for Izuku to watch while he made his phone call. What? A tired and somewhat grumpy voice came. Well good morning to you too, Tashinori responded, shaking off Azawa's rudeness with a smile. He was honestly used to it by now. I don't have time for this. Azawa was about to hang out when he heard his co-worker call out wait in a somewhat desperate voice. Despite his better judgment he decided to give his coworker one more chance. The sooner he got this done sooner he could go back to sleep until class started. Make it quick, Azawa ordered. I'm sure by now you've heard what happened to Midoriya. I'm not watching him. But Azawa. I hate kids. That's a lie. I'm a teacher not a babysitter. He's still your student, even if he is 10 years younger. Also I'm sure his classmates are worried sick about him. Isn't it your job, as a teacher, to provide a suitable learning environment for your students? There was silence on the other end of the line. For a moment Tashinori thought Azawa had hung up until he heard a disgruntled sigh. Fine. Fine. I'll watch the kid. As long as he doesn't act like some uppity brat we shouldn't have a problem. Oh don't worry. Izuku's very well behaved. Thank you very much. I'll be by 10, Tashinori said before he hung up. He turned his attention to Izuku. 
The video had just ended, and he looked as though he was trying to contain his excitement. Izuku, come on we're leaving, Tashinori called, snapping the toddler out of his trance. Izuku slid off the office chair and walked up to Tashinori, taking the hand offered to him. The two walked through the halls of UA, Izuku happily keeping up as he soaked in every little detail about the school and the heroes who had walked through these halls. The pair came to a stop when they reached class 1A. Tashinori slid the door open and the two immediately noticed a strangely humanoid-shaped yellow sleeping bag on the desk. Well this is new Tashinori thought. He let go of Izuku's hand and the child started cautiously creeping towards the sleeping bag. Usually Izawa slept on the floor. Suddenly the sleeping bag moved revealing Izawa's face. Izuku let out a squeak of what was a mix of both fear and surprise before scattering towards Tashinori and latching onto him. Sleeping on the desk now in Izawa. Tashinori noted as he picked up the frightened child. Izuku instantly grabbed onto the front of Tashinori's dress shirt and buried his face in the crook of his neck. The scary-looking man let out a grunt in response before unzipping his sleeping bag and stepping out. Izuku is a friend of mine, as always said. Why don't you say hi? Tashinori suggested. Izuku's response was him tightening his grip on Tashinori's shirt and screwing his eyes shut. He hates me. Are we done here? Azawa asked. His sleeping bag was calling to him. Tashinori gave his co-worker a dirty look and jostled Izuku slightly in his arms to get his attention. It's okay my boy. Azawa is my friend. Friend is a strong word. Tashinori rolled his eyes, he won't hurt you. I promise and he's not as scary as he looks. Bei Chen. Slowly Izuku opened his eyes and pulled his head away a little so he could get a look at Izawa. He couldn't place it but something about him looked familiar. That scarf. The clicked. The racer head. Izuku exclaimed excitedly. Tashinori put Izuku down. The child took this opportunity to run up to the hero to get a closer look. I heard so much about you and your ability to take others' quirks away which must be hard, how do you keep your eyes open, soul and git must be so hard, but anyways you're so. Slow down, no one can understand what you're saying. Tashinori exclaimed as he spat up blood, facing away from the two. Izuku gave a sheepish smile and blush and apologized. Sorry it's just, you're so cool. Mm, by your attire I wouldn't have noticed, as always said, however the comment was more directed towards the other hero in the room, whom he gave a conceited much. Look with the rise of an eyebrow. Tashinori smiling sheepishly. Now that Izawa pointed it out, having Izuku dressed like his alter ego did make him look full of himself. However in his defense Izuku did want to wear it. Well I have to get ready for class, come on kid, Izawa said. I get to be in your class. Izuku exclaimed, excitement bubbling over. Yeah, sure, why not, Izawa said to an unenthusiastic ally. It didn't seem to dampen Izuku's mood one bit. Izuku let out a squeal of excitement. He ran over to Izawa, who he had previously been afraid of, and grabbed his hand. The man let the child drag him towards the room when he suddenly stopped and looked past Izawa towards Tashinori. Come on daddy. Did he just call Izawa look to Tashinori? Tashinori caught his gaze and smiled sheepishly, promising an explanation later. This should be good. Tashinori kneeled down in front of Izuku so he was eye level. Daddy has some important stuff to take care of so he can't go with you right now. W what? Izuku whimpered. Tashinori winced. He had a feeling this would happen. Ever since Izuku became a little kid he's been kind of clingy. But, he had to do this, All Might had to teach the hero's course later on. If he was going to keep his identity a secret then Izuku couldn't see him transform. It was for his own good. Hey hey hey, no tears okay, Tashinori said, as he wiped away a tear that was falling down the child's face, I'll be back, I promise. Pinky promise? Izuku asked, holding out his pinky. Tashinori smiled reassuringly and hooked his pinky with the toddlers. Pinky promise. Tashinori ruffled the child's hair, eliciting a small smile from him before standing up. You might want to get back to the teacher's lounge. The students will be arriving soon, as Awa advised. You're right. See you later Izuku. Izuku instead of responding verbally, walked over to his guardian and hugged his leg, slightly surprising Tashinori in the process. What was even more surprising was when Izuku looked up at him and with a shaky smile. It was a little forced, but it was still there. Bye bye daddy. Tashinori smiled fondly at Izuku. He walked a couple of steps away before he suddenly turned around. By the way Izuku, I think I saw All Might walking around earlier. Hey All Might. Izuku squealed. Behind him as Awa rolled his eyes. This man and his damn ego. Yeah. Maybe you'll run into him, Tashinori said before leaving, a smirk on his face. He could only imagine how Izuku would react at meeting his idol at such a young age. It didn't take long for Izuku to get comfortable around Izawa. 
The man may seem scary, but in reality he's actually really nice, he had a soft spot for children, although he'd never admitted. The man had been talking to little Izuku, telling him more about his quirk when his students started to file in. Izuku, like usual, became suddenly shy and hid behind Izawa's legs. It wasn't until most of the class had filed in with the exception of Yuraka and Bakugu who seemed to be running late that anyone noticed Izuku. Hey, who the little guy? Kirishima suddenly asked. The whole class quieted down and followed his gaze. Izuku, now feeling all eyes on him, buried his face in Izawa's legs. Class, we have a special guest today. Why don't you introduce yourself? Azawa explained in his usual monotone voice. The toddler slowly stepped into full view so the whole class could see him. Some of the students, specifically Aida and Todoroki, eyes lit up with recognition. Was that? The toddler bowed, remembering his manners, hello, my name is Izuku. Nice to meet you all. Uraka didn't get any sleep last night with both guilt and worry eating away at her because of what had happened Friday. If it wasn't for Deku she would have been deaged and the thought of it made her feel terrible. If she had just been more aware of her surroundings none of this would have happened. Her feelings were only amplified when Deku and All Might didn't show up at school the next day. As Awa had explained to the class the events of what happened Friday, however he left out Yuraka's name and told everyone that that was the reason for the duo's absence. Yuraka wasn't worried about whether All Might was doing a good job taking care of her friend. She trusted All Might and him and Izuku seemed to have a close relationship, she thought that they were related in some way at the beginning of the school year, but she could only imagine what Izuku was going through. The thought of Izuku being in any pain over what had happened is what kept her awake until dawn. And so, here she was. Running, as fast, as she could to class. All because she overslept. It was futile. She was already late, as it was. However she wanted to minimize any penalty she could get by getting to class, as quickly as possible. Maybe if she got there quick enough as always sensei would understand and go easy on her. Uraka stopped running when she reached the door that had one painted on it. Who am I kidding? She thought to herself as she opened the door, even if I was just a second late, as always sensei wouldn't care. You're late was the first thing Uraka heard when she opened the door. I'm very sorry, she responded, her eyes screwed shut, here it comes. Just don't let it happen again. Uraka opened her eyes in confusion. That's when she noticed her teacher was still in his sleeping bag. But class started 10 minutes ago, didn't it? The others wanted some free time to get to know our guest, so you didn't miss anything. Just try to get to class on time or else there might be some actual consequences, as always said before rolling over in his sleeping bag so that he was no longer facing the door. Your rocker relaxed slightly. But I'm not in TR wait, what guest? That's when she heard the commotion her classmates were making. Eek. He's small and cute. Herriker squealed. If there was one thing she loved above plushies it was cute things. I agree, however can his looks outshine him. He's adorable. I wanna hold him. Mina exclaimed, cutting Aoyama off like usual. Now, everyone. You're overwhelming him. As class rep I order you all to make a single file line, Ida ordered. Like usual no one listened. Hey don't take it personally man. Besides I think he likes all the attention, Kirishima said to Ida, placing a hand on his shoulder. Ida kun Oh, you're Rakasan. Is something wrong? Ida asked. Normally Yuraka was a fairly punctual person, so it was somewhat of an oddity for her to be late. Yuraka shook her head, I'm fine. What's going on over there? She asked, looking past him. Oh. You came in late so you must not know about our special guest, Kirishima said. Special guest? Come on, you're gonna flip, Kirishima said with a grin before walking towards the crowd. Guys come on, let us through, he said, making his way through the crowd with Yuraka in tow. When they reached the middle of the crowd they saw Todoroki sitting at a desk. That wasn't anything unusual. It was what sat on his lap that was the object of everyone's attention. Sitting there clad in an All Might Odyssey with a hood on, smiling brightly was the one who Yuraka had been worrying about all of yesterday. Ida. Deku. Everyone flinched and looked towards the doorway to see who had just both yelled and interrupted Yuraka. There in the doorway stood Bakugu, wearing an expression that looked like it was a mix between shock and disbelief, however, the class of one wouldn't be surprised if there was some murder mixed in there, as well. Bakugu, I order you to quiet down at once. You're scaring young Midoriya. Iida ordered the blonde to run up. He was ignored when Katsuki walked right past him and towards the group. Hiroshima and Tokoyama got into defensive positions in front of Midoriya, and Todoroki tightened his grip on the little one. They knew Bakugu and Midoriya had a shaky history and thus were weary. Attacking their classmate while he was in this state was just unforgivable. Who the hell do you think you are? 
who gave you permission to turn into a kid and not even show up to school, Monday he yelled while he walked closer, and close. Izuku just looked up at him blankly before smiling, you look like my friend Kachin. He exclaimed, pointing at the angry teen. Bakugou let out a growl. Everyone thought for sure he was gonna blow. Azawa unzipped his sleeping bag slightly, getting ready to use his cork if needed. Instead of attacking like they expected Bakugou instead faced the other way towards Mineta who was sitting down. You're in my seat, Bakugou said in a deathly calm voice. I'm sorry. Please don't kill me. Mineta cried, as he scrambled to get as far away from Bakugou's desk as possible. Bakugou sat down, looking away from the others. The others, excluding Azawa because he didn't care, and Midoriya who was drawing a picture using the paper and crayons Momo made him, looked at Bakugou in shock. Bakugou noticed and acted accordingly. What the hell are you all staring at? Everyone turned away. When it came to Bakugou sometimes it was better to back away and let him cool down for a bit. Class eventually did start. Izuku, despite his age, seemed to understand everything that was being taught or at least he pretended to understand. The teachers along with the students were aware of the events that transpired on Friday and decided to change the structure of their classes for the time being. It wasn't much really. Present Mick just spoke more quietly during his class, instead of yelling like he normally did while Midnight, who loved cute things, gave the students a free period so she could frown over the child who she had dubbed Chibi Might. When lunch rolled around Izuku disappeared. The students weren't concerned though, as some said they saw Azawa carrying him towards the All Might's office. Izuku sometimes had lunch with the pro hero anyways, so this was normal. At lunch Uraraka usually sat with Iida, Deku, Todoroki, Sai, and sometimes Bakugou would sit with them. This time was not one of those times, and since Deku was with their teacher it was just the four. I kind of like Midori like this. He reminds me of my sibling's ribbit, Sayu stated plainly, as she bit into her sandwich. How could you say something like that? Who knows what kind of trauma he's going through? Iida exclaimed. Uraraka flinched at this, and Iida instantly regretted his work choice. No, not trauma. What I meant to say was uh. I think we can all agree that the sooner Midoriya recovers the better, Todoroki said. Agreed. Although I like Midori like this, I think I like the version we know of him more, Sai said. By the way Todoroki I've been meaning to ask, why was Deku on your lap when I first walked into the room? Yuraka asked. She had never really taken Todoroki of all people to be someone who was good with kids, so what she saw came as sort of a shock. Midoriya said he was cold, so Iida yelled at me to warm him up, Todoroki responded. Hey. Hypothermia is a serious illness that is not to be trifled with. Iida exclaimed in a serious voice. Iraka laughed nervously. First she learned Todoroki was good with kids. Next she learns Iida is a smother. Considering how contradicting these findings are, she wouldn't be surprised if it turned out Sai was actually a chicken or something. Todoroki Niasen. The four teens barely had time to react before an excited child with green hair was jumping up and down next to their table. Midoriya, what are you doing here? Are you lost? Iida asked. It wouldn't surprise him with how big UA was. Izuku shook his head with a smile. That's when Yuraka noticed the lunch bag he was holding. Daddy said I could eat with Todoroki and Iida Kun if I wanted to. Daddy? Todoroki mumbled as he helped Izuku onto the seat next to him. He's referring to All Might, Yuraka responded. Izuku gave Yuraka a confused look, All Might not Daddy. Now it was Yuraka's turn to be confused. She opened her mouth to say something when she was pulled to the side by Iida. All Might Sensei probably didn't tell Izuku his hero identity, he whispered. Yuraka nodded. It did make sense. A lot of people were after All Might, and having someone who has a personal connection to you can be dangerous. Still she couldn't help but wonder how weird it must have felt wearing a disguise in your own home, oh if only she knew. The first couple minutes of lunch went well for the five. That is until Izuku saw a certain familiar blonde walk by. While the others were distracted with an argument that ensued between Iida and Tsu, something on whether it was rude or not to stick out your tongue while eating with others, Izuku silently slipped out of the booth a group was sitting at and followed Bakugou. I can't help sticking my tongue out, Tsu stated plainly. It can be seen as disrespectful in many cultures. Iida stated in his over-the-top authoritative voice. Then that's their problem, Tsu said, as she ate some rice using her tongue, much to Iida's horror. Where's Deku? Yuraka asked, getting the attention of the two who were arguing. He was here a moment ago, Todoroki said, looking around the area the now group of four sat at. We'll split up, I'll check the cafeteria, Todoroki, and Yuraka, you two search the halls. Tsai. I told you to call me Tsu. Right, Tsu you check the outside perimeter of the school. If anyone finds Izuku, text the rest, and we'll meet up. The three nodded and began their search. They could only hope Izuku hadn't hurt himself somehow. 
When Bakugu reached his destination he stopped. It was a part of the school not many students or faculty used. He just wanted to be alone today. The events of today were a lot to take in. He knew Izuku was de-aged and his memory had been affected, but he couldn't stand Izuku looking at him with those damn innocent eyes. The eyes that Izuku used to look at him with when they were still friends. Every time they saw him, those green orbs filled up with trust, with happiness. It filled Bakugu with what he could only describe as goo. Hachin. Bakugu's eyes widened when he heard the innocent chirp. He spun around and glared at the child hoping to scare him away. What? He snapped. However, that didn't seem to do anything, as Izuku just edged forward. You look just like my friend Kachin. Akigu just looked away. That damn stare again. Are you two related? Are you Kachin's big brother? Akigu almost scoffed. He was an only child. His mother could barely handle him, it would be pretty stupid of her to even think about wanting another child. Suddenly Izuku was right in front of him. He must have walked up when Bakugu was lost in thought. My name is Izuku. What's yours? Bakugu turned around to hide what was totally not a small blush. I don't care what you call me, he grumbled. The silence hung heavy in the air before it was broken by Todoroki who had just stumbled upon the duo. There you are, Izuku. Don't run off like that again. You had the others, and I worried, Todoroki scolded, picking the child up. Bakugu turned back around and stared at the half and half bastard as he had so lovingly dubbed him. Bakugu, Todoroki said in a form of greeting. Half and half, Bakugu grumbled back. The two stared each other down before Todoroki shifted his gaze to Izuku. Let's go eat our lunch before it gets cold. Izuku nodded cheerfully. Okay. Todoroki started to, still carrying Izuku. Just before they turned the corner Izuku peeked his head over Todoroki's shoulder. Bye bye Kachin Nai. It was a good thing those two were out of sight, because Bakugu would have killed anyone who had seen him blushing, as much as he was right now. Am Deku Bakugu mumbled before walking away, determined to find a new place to think about things. The say Toshinori was worried would be an understatement. He had been apprehensive about bringing his pupil here, but after spending so many hours apart he was really starting to regret it. When Azawa had seen him earlier he told Toshinori that he was just going through separation anxiety and that he would inform him if anything happened, however that did nothing to calm his worries. What if he brought Izuku back to school too early? Maybe he should have waited a little bit longer. What if one of the children hurt him by accident? Don't get him wrong Toshinori trusted his students, but some of them, particularly Bakugu, tended to let their emotions get the better of them when in tense situation, which could cause their quirks to go off and. Toshinori shook his head to rid himself of such thoughts. Maybe Azawa was right. Maybe he was mother henning over Izuku too much. The people in the school were good people, and he knew that everyone else was probably doing their best to help Izuku through this difficult time. Speaking of helping. Toshinori stopped in front of the class one a door and transformed. It was time for him to help his students learn how to become heroes. I am entering the room like a normal person. The hole was silent before being broken by a child's SP. All Might. Said child yelled in both shock and excitement. All Might did his trademark laugh and flexed his muscles, putting on a show for his number one fan. While well, Izuku thought it was amazing, the rest of the class thought it was super cheesy and kind of corny. Hagakur on the other hand was trying her best to hold back her laughter. Midoriya just looked so darn cute when he was excited. Hello everyone. Today we are going to compete in a game to capture the flag. It will serve as a way to test your stealth skills, offensive skills, as well as your defense when it comes to protecting something whether it's a dangerous weapon or a person. Yahoo! I rock at stealth games. Hagakur exclaimed excitedly. I'm terrible at these types of games. Everyone already has a hard time taking their eyes off me, Aoyama lamented. Little did he know no one was looking at him, nor did they care. Everybody suits up, we'll be starting in 10 minutes in the schoolyard. The students got up and started to leave. All Might was about to leave when he felt a tug on his cape. It was Izuku looking up at him in amazement. Young Izuku, I should have known you would have stayed behind. Izuku let out a gasp when the hero realized his mistake. He wasn't supposed to know who Izuku was. How would he cover this one up? You know my name? Thinking quick All Might let out a loud laugh. Why, of course. I am All Might I know everything. Izuku smiled brightly, can I have your autograph? Why of course. All Might scribbled his name on a piece of paper and gave it to the toddler who was practically shaking. I can't wait to show daddy. Izuku exclaimed, holding the autograph to his chest. All Might let out another laugh before kneeling down. How would you like to help me out with something? Izuku let out a gasp, really. The hero nodded, of course. Every hero needs a sidekick. Izuku stared at All Might blankly, letting what he had just been told sink in. For a moment All Might thought the kid was unconscious when suddenly he let out a loud yell. 
Then we're gonna be almighty sidekick him we're gonna be a hero just like he is, and fight bad guys and stuff, and be a hero this is so cool. Izuku put the hood of his honesty on, and did his imitation of All Might's laugh, and pose including the hands on hips. All Might turned around trying to hide his laughter, and blush. When it came to Izuku could you really blame him? Blue team wins. All Might announced, as Yuraka grabbed the other team's flag. You gotta be kidding. And we were doing so well to Ajiro's side. We did it. Yuraka yelled happily. Great job out there Yuraka. Iida congratulated me. We couldn't have won without you, Ribbit, Sue said. All you guys, your rocker replied blushing slightly due to all the positive comments. You did very well my girl, All Might said, as he walked towards them. Wow. Your quirk is so cool. Izuku said from the top of All Might's shoulders. Thanks Steku. I hope my quirk will be as cool as yours. It will be, I can guarantee, she said with a wink. All Might cleared his throat so he could address the class. Good work today everyone. Someday you'll all be fine. Class will be ending soon so please change back into your normal clothes and return to the classroom. I have some business to attend to. Yes, Sensei. There was a silence as All Might walked down the hallways of UA, Izuku still on his shoulders. He could feel Izuku playing with a hair of his that stood up, probably out of a mix of both boredom and curiosity on how they stood up like that. So Izuku, what did you think about your first day at UA? The hero asked. I like it. I want to go here too someday, Izuku replied in a tired tone. It was a pretty tiring day, and he was only four, physically and mentally. By the time the hero reached his office Izuku was asleep on his shoulders. All Might gently placed the sleeping Izuku on the couch before allowing himself to detransform. Picking up a sleeping child, Tashinori started to make his way out of the building. He was leaving a little early, but he wasn't required to stay, as long as teachers like Azawa, and he wouldn't have to explain to the students who he was and why he had Izuku with him. When they got back to the house instead of placing him in his room, Tashinori placed Izuku in the guest room instead. For the first couple nights he had wanted Izuku to sleep with him in fear that the kid would accidentally hurt himself, however, he felt the tot was old enough to sleep alone in a bed. Tucking him in, Tashinori left the room, closing the door. Once he was out he walked into the kitchen thinking of what the two could have for dinner when they woke up. He walked over to the fridge and opened it pulling out the milk. He placed it down on the counter and left the room. When he came back he taped a piece of paper to the fridge and got to work. The piece of paper was the drawing Izuku made for him earlier. Daddy? Tashinori stirred slightly at the small voice he had become all too accustomed to and the label that came with it. However he knew for a fact that it couldn't be morning already. Blearily he opened his eyes. He was able to make out the small outline of his now five-year-old charge. What are you doing? It's two o'clock in the morning. Izuku fiddled with the hem of the blue two-piece pajamas Tashinori was able to get Izuku into, he really loved that All Might honesty. I had a nightmare, he mumbled shyly while not making eye contact. Tashinori moved over and patted the now empty space. Izuku took the hint and launched himself onto the bed burrowing into Tashinori's side. You want to talk about it? Tashinori asked, rubbing small soothing circles on the boy's thoughts. Izuku hid his face in Tashinori's shirt. It's stupid. Tashinori pulled Izuku into a one-armed hug. If it scares you this much it can't be stupid. But it is. Izuku suddenly exclaimed, looking up at Tashinori, even though he couldn't see him due to the darkness. Only a quirkless loser like me would get scared so easily, Izuku finished, the last part falling into a weak whisper. Izuku remembers being quirkless. What perplexed Tashinori the most was what could have triggered the memory of the boy finding out he was quirkless. He seemed perfectly happy before he fell asleep. Suddenly he heard what sounded like a sniffle. Tucking his thoughts away for later Tashinori sat up, pulling the boy up with him. Keeping one arm around him, as a way of comforting him, Tashinori wiped away a tear that was making its way down the child's face. It pained Tashinori knowing what kind of torment the boy had gone through after finding out he was Quirkles. He didn't know what exactly had happened to Izuku, but considering his own once quirklessness, he could imagine the two had a similar experience growing up. It took so much of his willpower to not tell this child the truth. To not tell him that he was now the bearer of one of the most powerful quirks in the world. If Izuku knew he'd want to test it out, Tashinori wasn't sure how Izuku's small body would react. Would his body be able to handle it due to intensive training he did before deaging, or would the quirk treat this now smaller body as a new vessel? Would it even work or was one for all locked away for the time being? These were things the pro hero wanted to know, but dare not to experiment with. Not if it was at Izuku's expense. You're nothing but a loser my boy. Trust me, Tashinori whispered. Eventually Izuku ended up crying himself to sleep leaving Tashinori alone with his thoughts and wondering what to do. Akigu-san. Putting your feet up on these desks is highly disrespectful and I demand you take them off. 
Iida commanded. Bakugou rolled his eyes. Don't tell me what to do for eyes. Iida just let it go. Bakugou's too ignorant to listen anyways, Kirishima said with a teasing grin. And it weird hair. Bakugou yelled back, causing Kirishima's grin to grow. The commotion going on settled down once as Awa entered the room, he tended to have that effect on people. To everyone's confusion Deku wasn't with him this time. It was just Azawa. Azawa sensei, where's Deku Kun? Uraraka asked. He's still with All Might. I don't know much about the situation, and frankly I don't really care much either. Now does anyone else have any questions they want to ask to waste my time? Good. Azawa started to list off the morning announcements, but Uraraka couldn't focus. She wasn't sure why, but she had a bad feeling about today. My boy, is there a reason you don't want to go back to Azawa's class? Tashinori asked. When the two had first walked into the school Izuku asked if he could stay with him. Even though the thought of spending another day with his protege was appealing he knew he couldn't. All Might still had to teach that hero's course, and it was probably best for Izuku to have interactions with other people than just Tashinori. He didn't know much about kids, but he knew social interactions were very important for children Izuku's age, even if he would only be this age for one day. Izuku shook his head and continued to watch All Might's debut video. He held no expression. None of the excitement he previously held over the video was present. The only expression the child showed towards the video was an empty blank stare. What about your friends? I'm sure they'll be happy to see you. Izuku drew his legs up onto the chair and up at his chest and rested his head on his knees. They probably won't like me anymore once they find out I don't have the power, he said in a voice barely above a whisper. Nonsense. What makes you say that? Tashinori asked. Where in the world did little Izuku get such a... Hachin? Oh. Hachin, Kachin said that I'm just a Deku, that I'm useless, and that nobody likes quirkless losers like me, Izuku said, his voice cracking on the last word. He looked up at Tashinori with a heartbreaking expression, as tears streamed down his face, do you still love me? Tashinori hugged his son tightly hoping that the gesture alone could convey how he was feeling. Just to be certain however he decided to speak. Of course my boy. I love you so much. Despite his gentle tone he couldn't help but to feel angry. Not in Izuku, but in the world. A world that made a child feel unloved, made them feel useless, and that they'll never amount to anything was simply unforgivable. Part of him wants to lecture Bakugou on how bullying will not be tolerated, but that wouldn't do any good. The past was in the past, and he seemed to be mellowing out little by little. He was still unkind to others, but it was a start. From what All Might had seen he didn't seem to bully Izuku anymore either, or at least not to the extent that he did. Dad. Yes Izuku. Who do you think I can be a hero? There it was. The question that Tashinori knew Izuku had been asking his whole life before they met. Wishing, praying that someone would say yes. That someone would believe in him. Izuku had done so many amazing things and blew Tashinori's expectations out of the water. He had also saved Tashinori from himself by giving him a family, and that's what do. They save people. They save lives. So with no hesitation Tashinori gave his answer. Yes Izuku, you can become a hero. Eku-kun, Uraraka started, stopping when she saw Izuku flinch, Izuku-kun, is everything okay? She wasn't sure what happened, but Deku's personality from the cheerful boy that was here yesterday did a complete 180. Now he seemed scared, nervous even. It wasn't just her that noticed, everyone that came in contact with the boy prior had noticed. What happened? I'm okay, Deku whispered before looking down quietly playing with the hem of his shirt. Uraraka's frown deepened. Ever since lunch started her, and the rest of class 1 excluding Bakugou, had been trying to find out what had happened to make him act this way. So here they were, still inside class 1A, lunches ranging from eaten to yet to be eaten, trying to find out what was making their friend do this, but to no avail. Come on Midoriya, you can tell us, Kirishima tried. He's right, and if it's a person we can go beat them up for you if you want, Kaminari said with a confident smile. Izuku's head shot up. Instead of getting the expression he wanted, Midori looked like he was about to start crying. Way to go Denki, Jiro said, sounding both unamused and mildly annoyed, as she twirled her ear jacks. Midoriya, whatever it is you can tell us, Iida stated in his overly authoritative voice that no one could take seriously. Yeah Izuku-chan. We just want to help because we care about you. Mina exclaimed. Izuku drew his knees towards his chest and fell silent. His classmates exchanged worried looks with each other, not knowing what to do. Before anyone else could attempt to get the child to open up, there was the sound of a chair roughly scraped against the classroom floor, followed by aggressive footsteps. Bakugou stopped when he was in front of the desk Izuku was sitting at and slammed his hands down, causing Izuku to flinch. Listen here Deku. Just because you're useless now doesn't mean you'll stay that way so quit crying about it. 
Everyone was silent as they just stared at Bakugou, not sure what they should make of the situation. Izuku sniffled, but I don't have a. Didn't you listen to a word I said you quirkless loser? Bakugou roared. At this point everyone was starting to fear for the much younger Izuku's safety. Todoroki stepped closer towards Izuku while Kirishima tried to talk some sense into the fiery blonde. Hey man, take it easy. Shut up weird hair. Bakugou. Same goes to you half and half. Hachinai. The room fell silent once more as all eyes fell on the youngest in the class. Izuku looked down, though nervous. My my daddy says I can become a hero. Do do you think I can become a hero? The whole room fell silent. Izuku looked up at Bakugou with teary eyes, waiting for an answer. After what seemed like an hour, Bakugou spoke with his head down in an oddly calm tone. What does it matter what I think? You always did what you wanted anyway. The room fell silent again, this time with a heavy tension hanging in the air. Snicker Kachin Nai. Do you wanna FCKING go? I'll kill you all. Bakugou yelled at Siro. Oh come on Baku bro, I think it's kind of cute, Kirishima said, trying not to snicker. Did I say you could speak? As the rest of the class continued to tease Bakugou about his new nickname, Yuraka decided to glance at Izuku to see if he was okay. He was smiling, a genuine smile. Eku-kun, what are you so happy about? Yuraka asked. Normally when Bakugou flips out on him Deku would get nervous. It's because I know I will become a hero. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.